whether you want to film fishing videos for your own enjoyment, film videos for your mates and family, or perhaps even a club, or even launch your own fishing YouTube channel. This video series is going to help to get you started. I'll be demoing some of the phone's features on an iPhone, but if you're an Android user, still loads of transferable skills and advice in here for you too. The first time I filmed myself fishing was when I was tench fishing. I'd not long got the rods in the water, and for some reason a question popped into my head. Would the built-in microphone on my iPhone be able to pick up my voice if I put the camera right next to my rods? It was a windy day, and to make matters worse, I was fishing into the wind. I gave it a go, and to my surprise, the phone coped admirably. Sure, it wasn't perfect, but it was definitely passable. That video is actually the first video I posted on YouTube. And, get ready for this, it has a whopping 238 views. So I want to make this first video as accessible and easy as I can. And that's why I've chosen to start by showing you how to film and edit on your mobile phone, just like I started. At the end of the video, I'll also pop up a link to two other videos that I think you'll want to watch after this one. And at least one of those is going to cover how to edit video on your phone or a computer. So, you might be asking yourself, is a phone really the best option for filming? Well, today's smartphones are incredibly powerful video cameras. And there are many advantages to using them when you're out on the bank. They're portable, they're accessible, they're powerful, and they're simple to use. Relatively. Some of you might have a DSLR or even a mirrorless camera that you use for your catch photos, but I bet most of your fishing photos are actually on your phone. And that's just because it's less hassle to set up and use than your big camera. And that's half the battle when you're creating fishing videos. You have to make it as simple as possible and as hassle-free as possible. There are, however, some disadvantages to filming on a mobile phone. The two most obvious ones are storage and battery life. But these can be pretty easily overcome. Battery life can be solved by plugging in an external power pack. And the storage problem, yeah, a bit more challenging. But if you have an Android phone, then you can maybe add a larger SD card. And if you have an iPhone, hopefully you either have one with plenty of storage or maybe you'll just have to do some regular housekeeping, remove videos from your phone to your PC regularly. The real problem when shooting yourself on a mobile phone is that if you want to be able to get the best quality, you have to use the camera on the back of the phone. This is because the rear camera can shoot in a high resolution, copes better in lower light, and can shoot at faster frames per second. But let's not worry about FPS right now. I'll get to that later when we're talking about settings. But when you use the back of the camera and you have it set up on a tripod pointing at you fishing, you can't check whether or not you're in shot, framed correctly, in focus, or even whether or not the phone is recording. Now, if you have an Apple Watch and an iPhone, then you can connect your phone to your watch and use your watch as some form of remote control and so that you can look at your wrist and check that it's recording and in frame. And you might be able to do something similar with Android phones too. But remember, I'm trying to keep this simple. So why not, just for now, just go easy on yourself, use the front camera, and live with the drop in quality. And if you've got one of the latest smartphones, that's definitely what I suggest you do. The majority of that first tench fishing video I recorded was actually shot on the front facing camera of my iPhone 14. Certainly the pieces to camera, when I'm talking directly into the lens of the camera like this, those were definitely shot on the front camera. However, there's no denying that the rear camera of your phone is going to be better quality and will give you more options when it comes to editing your footage. So what is the minimum amount of tech that you can get away with when you go fishing? Well, I'd suggest obviously your phone, a tripod or maybe a bank stick and an adapter screw, and a phone holder for your tripod. Most of you will already have that gear for your self-catch photos. So what else would I recommend? Well, a portable battery pack. As I say, filming video will quickly use up your phone's battery. A phone cage. 
It definitely helps and it allows you to add the battery pack on, maybe external microphones and things like that. And that leads me on to audio. Audio is 50% of video. Now, an external microphone will definitely improve the quality of your audio. A wireless lapel is ideal, but they're quite expensive and you can use a shotgun mic which you can plug into your phone and it will just pick up the audio that you're pointing at. So that's a great option. If you've got money burning a hole in your pocket, then check out the video description and you'll find some links to some of the equipment I use or recommend. Now, some top tips for beginners. Don't just hit record and keep it going. This only leads to editing hell. You have to be selective and decisive with your shots. And it's best to avoid moving your phone about when you're filming, as this will just look amateurish. A great tip is to shoot in short bursts and keep the shot fixed, either on a tripod or by planting your feet and keeping your phone rock steady. And then stitch the desired clips together in the edit afterwards to make your final film. I'll talk more about this in editing videos and also when I talk about shooting B-roll later on in this video. And I'm also going to show you the exact settings to change to get the most out of your iPhone's video camera. But if I'm shooting cutaways and B-roll, I typically shoot around 10 seconds of video on each shot. This is great for shots of your reel, shots of your bait, shots of your tackle, that type of thing. But first, let's just talk about framing your shots. Essentially, framing is deciding what's in the shot and where. There's a lot to consider when framing your shots. For example, the lighting, the subject, and the aim of the footage. How does it add to your story? Let's start with lighting. As you're starting out, I'd recommend just working with natural light sources, the sun, and not using additional LED lights. So, if you're shooting someone else when filming outside, it's best to keep your bum to the sun. If the sun is behind you, the subject in your video will be illuminated from the front, ensuring that they're evenly and well lit. And if you're shooting yourself, make sure you're either looking into the sun, or if that's making you squint, just have the sun at, say, a 45 degree angle to you. What you definitely want to avoid is having the sun pointing at the camera lens, as that will overexpose your footage, making you look all white and washed out, and you'll get weird light features like sun glare. So, some framing techniques. A great rule to use, whether you're shooting video or even taking photographs, is the rule of thirds. Imagine the image divided up into three sections, two horizontal and two vertical guidelines. The idea is that the item of interest a best place on the intersection of those guidelines. Later in this video, I'll show you just how you can put a grid up on your phone to help you with that. Now, symmetry is important, but if an image is too balanced or too similar in both left and right halves, the audience may find it dull and boring. Instead, placing items that you wish to draw attention to above the mentioned lines of the intersections, even if that seems counterintuitive, would leave you with more beautiful imagery. Another great technique you need to know is something called the three-shot sequence. The three-shot sequence is a combination of a wide, a long, a medium, and a close-up shot to depict the same subject from three different distances. Often different angles are used for each shot. A good three-shot sequence to practice is to start wide at the greatest distance and move progressively closer to the subject. But make sure that you move with your feet. Please don't use the digital zoom on your phone, as this will just end up giving your footage a grainy, kind of wobbly feel. Now, if you're filming yourself fishing, this can require a bit of work, as you have to move the camera, set it to record, then move back to your swim and do whatever it is you want to film. You sitting there, trotting afloat, casting, etc. And then you have to go and reposition the camera and go through the whole process again. And you've got to do that three times. But you can also apply the three shot sequence without actually moving from the camera. Let's say you're talking to the camera about your rig. Your first shot might be a side shot of you fishing. The second shot is you looking at the camera and introducing the rig. And the third shot is you holding that rig up to the camera for the close up. 
When it comes to video production, the old adage of failing to prepare is preparing to fail is definitely true. But your planning doesn't need to be complex. Just make a few notes on your phone and spend a bit of time considering what type of shots you want to capture before heading out fishing. If you check out the description of this video, I'll tell you how you can get your hands on a free fishing shot list that I created so that I didn't forget to capture all the video footage that I needed. Under composition, we've got grid and level. Let's turn both of these on. When you're shooting, this is gonna overlay a grid and a level onto your screen. So it's easier to line up your shot to frame things using the rule of thirds and to make sure that your camera is level. Thanks for watching this video. My name is James and I'd be really grateful if you would subscribe to my channel where you'll find all sorts of fishing related videos. But for now, tight lines, stay safe out there and send me links to any videos that you guys go and create.